In this video, we're gonna look at the brand new Warframe Steinax. We're gonna go over how to get him, how to build him, how to play him, and you're gonna get all the information you need to get the most out of your Steinax, and uh, believe me, Steinax packs quite the punch. So if you're up for that, stay tuned. So first things first, how do you get him? Well, it's actually pretty simple. If you log into the game until the 21st of September, you're gonna get him for free simply for logging in, and he already comes with a potato pre-installed so you get double sweet mod capacity. However, if you don't make it in time, it's also not that bad. You simply go to the drifter camp to a new NPC called Chipper, and he's supposed to be selling the blueprints for the components, and then you can simply build him. Whew. So, let's look at his skills, starting with the passive, and Steinax comes with a really nice passive. You can see it up there in the corner next to your health and shield. This is a little percentile figure, because what this shows is that you gain crit chance the more shields you have. The crit chance will be applied to your gun, simply like Point Strike, for example, is additive to mods like Point Strike, and the more shields you have, the more crit chance you get for your attacks, and if you're using the spear gun, for example, his signature your weapon, then this crit chance is even doubled. So this is really nice and it really motivates you to keep your shields high and up at all times. Going into his first ability, this is a nice spear throw with which you can attach enemies to walls Boltor style or bow style or every second weapon in the game style, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. You can attach enemies to walls with the spear throw, and if you manage to do that, either into the wall or into the floor, you create a vortex which sucks in your enemies and builds a huge pile of bodies, a huge blob. It's a bit like Larva from Nidus, but you can cast it and you can spam it, it's not expensive. Uh, so you can really use this for some nice, sweet crowd control. Continuing into his second skill, which is where it gets even more interesting. His second skill is a huge deal because it is able to armor strip and to shield strip at the same time. So it's taken away all the defenses of the enemies affected. What you're doing is you're shield bashing forward so enemies that are standing in front of you get hit by the shield fragments that you're shooting out and also enemies that are all around you, like in really close proximity to you also get hit if they're standing on your side or behind you so even if somebody tries to sneak up on you stealthily this shield badge is not going to miss him oh yeah and, and it also heals your health but to be honest if, if you're constantly healing your health as Steinax then you're probably doing something wrong also, this one is his helmet ability, so if you want to have that nice shield and armor strip on other Warframes, feel free to give him a painful death. And after having had two nice skills, we continue with another nice skill. <laughs> his third ability is also super strong. It does so many things at the same time. First, it makes you a tank in a classical role-playing perspective, you know? You smash that 3 button and you pull all the aggro of surrounding enemies, taking the fire away from your teammates. At the same time, you gain energy regeneration and all the teammates in your area also gain this energy regeneration buff. And not only that, if you think that's already nice enough, no, there's more. This skill also increases your shields for every kill that you do or every kill assist, meaning if you soften an enemy and a teammate comes in and goes for the kill, you also get your shields restored with that, leading to also some nice overshielding potential, which further fuels your crit buff from the passive and your survivability. Third skill is really amazing. I would have loved if that was the helmet ability, but you know, can't have everything. And last but not least, the skill that you've all been waiting for, his big bad spear throw. He jumps into the air and throws a thousand spears down onto his enemies, dealing amazing damage. I mean, you see it in the background. These enemies are really high level for the unmodded skill that I'm using and they're dying anyway, so this thing deals a surprising amount of damage. But not only that, it also force proc slash so you can get some nice bleeds which go around armor, which the enemy should not have at all if you use your second skill properly, but you get what I'm saying. This this skill is really strong and deals out a lot of damage even beyond level 50 in normal star charge content, so that's really nice, you can take it in the arbitration, take it in the sortie, it's a good skill, I like it, it is a lot of fun. 
So let's look at how to build him. But before you skip ahead and just copy the build and then wonder why it doesn't work for you, uh, please just give me the benefit of the doubt and bear with me for a couple of minutes because there are some things that I simply need to understand about my two builds that I brought today, explain how they work so you can actually benefit from them and uh, we're gonna look at that right now. My first build that I brought today is the so-called all-around build, but all-around really doesn't sound too nice, but it actually really is. Let's go over it. So in the aura, you're basically free to do whatever the heck you want. Yeah, I went and took Energy Siphon because I can imagine not everybody does have a full Arcane Energize. If you don't have this, Energy Siphon is going to be a good selection. Otherwise, you could go for Corrosive Projection, but Corrosive Projection is not really needed in the level area for which this build is meant. So you could also go for whatever floats your boat. Then we're going to take a look at our uh, percentile figures here because this is really important right here. Um, we are using all four skills for Styanax in this build, meaning we're not necessarily going to have to use a helmet ability. They're all very solid. So first of all, for the first skill, it's a nice crowd control, but you don't really have to mod for it. As long as you don't have like 0% range and don't suck any enemy in, this one is quite good right out the box. But when we get to our second skill, then it starts getting interesting, because our second skill is a great armor and shield strip. The second skill strips by default half of the enemy armor and shields, but it does scale with um, ability strength. Meaning if we have 200 or more percent of ability strength, this one is a direct full strip permanently. So that's a very, very strong skill. So we want to have at least 200% ability strength, which we could use by, you know, just putting Blind Rage on, bringing us to 199, and then going for Corrosive Projection in conjunction with this one would also be 100% strip on our second. Going further to our third skill, this is the really nice one. Yeah, This is the one where we have our energy regeneration or shield regeneration, we give our, our team the energy and it is really great. Uh, this one benefits of course also from strength. The stronger it is, the more energy you regenerate, the more shield you regenerate. Um, it's great. The radius is also nice if you want your team to benefit from it. If you just want yourself to benefit from it, well, then you can also just screw the radius. And our fourth skill also drastically benefits from ability strength. So we see basically strength is the way to go for Styanax, but also, and that's the interesting part, duration. The duration increases the number of javelins thrown. So for example, if we went and take out prime continuity, we go from 55 thrown to only 38. So yeah, with the four, we want to have duration and strength, a healthy mix of both. We went for Blind Rage and Intensified to, to, uh, to have two strength mods to deal a bit more damage and of course have the uh, regeneration on our third skill. It is all you really need. You don't need to overly go all into strength. That is for our second build, which we're going to take a look at in a second. Then, of course, continuity and constitution. Constitution has a nice side effect with the knockdown recovery, but we're using these two here for some more duration, which is nice for, of course, our fourth skill, but also to keep this one here on for longer. It's both nice. And then adaptation, of course, so that our shields don't deplete as fast since adaptation, of course, also helps with shields. Then we have cunning drift for a bit more range just because I like the flavor of a bit more range, you know, the range is quite nice for our first ability, for example, and also to maybe hit some teammates with the third, which are a bit further away. Redirection, of course, because Styanax is a shield frame, so with redirection we're gonna have high shields, which is really nice for the level range that this build here is for. Of course, this is no level cap build. In a level cap build, you would not use this, but we are going to use this here. Then some streamline for efficiency, and prime flow to have more energy at our disposal but you do not need prime flow you could also use normal flow but i would recommend using a energy mod definitely because otherwise you're gonna run out pretty quickly when it comes to the arcanes i used energize because i have it if you don't have it don't use it put in something else that you see fit 
and the Arcane Nullifier, of course, because first, we're gonna have a lot of shields, second, we're gonna need our energy, and Arcane Nullifier protects us from those pesky magnetic procs, so that is really nice. But how do you really play this build now? Well, to be honest, this build is very free to play in the way that you can decide yourself what you want to do. If you see a good angle to throw your spear, your first ability, do that to pull up some enemies on one big pile is always nice, your teammates are going to thank you. If for whatever reason you see an enemy which has a lot of shields and a lot of armor, maybe like a demo unit in a arbitration disruption, you absolutely use your second skill and the armor and shield are gone. The third one, you want to have that running all the time because it gives you shields, it uh, gives you energy and your teammates energy as well and it's just great to have it on all the time. And then the fourth one, of course, you unleash the real deal, the real damage once you have the energy to do that. But don't, you know, be like, oh my god, I have enough energy to cast it and then you cast it and then you're at zero energy and your third skill runs out. So, uh, just use the fourth skill if you see you have the energy to sustain that. And that's basically the all-around build. As I said, you can use it for everything but Steel Path, because if you take this one in the Steel Path, you're gonna see it in the background right now. You still deal nice damage with the four, but the enemy deals nice damage against you, and you don't want that. So what we have here is the second build, which I called Shield Gate, because this is the real deal. This here is the expensive one, this is the high level steel path viable build, and I really love it because I find it very interesting. It also goes into shield gating like many other high level steel path builds, but it does it a bit differently, and uh, let's, let's go over how this one here works. So, first of all, as with all shield gating, uh, we're gonna use an extinguished dragon key which we are going to equip right now, so you can see that a bit better. Have I said de extinguished? I meant decaying, sorry. <laughs> With the key on, we reduce our shield to 188. This is still quite a lot, because in shield gating you want your shield to be as low as possible, so you can refill it faster. Uh, but with his 750 base shield, you know, Steinax, yeah, doesn't really want to be shield gated, but I managed to do it anyway. So, 188 shield to go. How we do this? Let's look at the build. So, as you can see here, we really exaggerated into uh, strength, you know? We slept on all the ability strength that we had in the rolling container. Uh, we have Blind Rage, Transient Fortitude, Augur Secrets, Umbral Intensify, and... Um, no, that one not. But uh, Growing Power, that's what I meant. Uh, we have five mods that increase our ability strength. This is huge. This is a strength build, you know. We're, we're not gonna care about efficiency. We got Arcane Energize. Um, we need Arcane Energize for this build, otherwise the efficiency is gonna kill us. Um, and thank you, Hotfix. Thank you real much. Welcome to the video. Uh, smash that like button if you also like the Hotfix. <laughs> anyway, where were we? Um, yeah, we really slap on a ton, a metric ton of ability strength. Problem is, these five here still do not give us enough ability strength for uh, to, to regain our shields fully, which is what we need. With all the ability strength that we have right now, we get one kill, 161 shields back. We have 188, meaning we would have to get two kills in 1.3 seconds to fully restore our shields. And, you know, that's a bit ambitious, and I would really love it to have just one kill to restore all the shields. So, how do we do that? We slept on Mold Augmented, which further increases, thank you Hotfix, further increases our ability strength up to 60 more percent. If you, you know, multiply 0 0.25, uh, 0 0.24 by 250, um, yeah, you know, it's plus another 60% when this one is fully charged. And with those 382%, all right, those 382%, we are able to finally get our shields back in one kill or one assist. That's, that is what we want with this build and that is what we achieve. Then we're gonna look at our skills and as you see, I deleted the fourth one for uh, Resonator from Octavia. Why that? 
First, the fourth one had to go because in those high levels that we're going to be engaging in, the four is simply going to get us killed. You know, if we're in the air for one, two seconds throwing those spears, we're going to get shot down, we're going to be dead, and it's not going to do enough damage. So you're going to have to rely on a strong weapon. Um, so we replaced the four with the resonator. Why the resonator? The resonator is very nice because it not only gives us a lot of crowd control, you know, uh, distracts the enemy from us and our team, it also has a really nice benefit. As um, we, we said with the third one, you have to kill yourself or get an assist to recharge your shield. So. How does that work? Uh, we want an assist, of course. If we have, if we're running, if if we're running in a team, uh, having teammates kill enemies can also restore our um, our shields, and we're gonna use the resonator for it. So let's spawn in some corrupted heavy gunners, and I show you what I mean. If I cast the resonator right here. You see that all the enemies affected by it take a little teetsy tiny bit of damage. Nothing that would kill them, not even in a hundred years, but we don't want to kill them with the resonator. The only thing we want to do is touch every enemy with the resonator once. So when a teammate kills them at some point, it's going to be an assist. Because of course we damage the enemy, if the uh, teammates kill it, then uh, we have assisted in that kill. <laughs> so um, what that means of course is the resonator gives us nice crowd control and it touches a lot of enemies, meaning basically whenever our teammates that are around us kill someone, it also counts into our shield gating, it also increases our shield because we got an assist. Now let me kill all of these because they're going to bother me. So let's further look into the build. With all the strength mod out of the way, uh, we went with a little bit of ability range for the Resonator mainly, because he can then touch more enemies. Stretch and Cunning Drift, you could max out Cunning Drift, but it would cost me another 4 mine, I was too stingy for that, so we get a little bit more range, which is quite nice. Prime Continuity, so, you know, the skills run a bit longer and a prime flow of course for the energy quick thinking well this is a bit of a blunder i basically just installed this in here for testing purposes this here would actually be the mod slot where you slap in your um rolling guard for of course the steel path uh, to get your three seconds of additional invulnerability and the status effects clear and everything and um you know play a bit with the with the build and you will get a feeling for when you will have to use rolling guard and when enough kills are incoming so you don't really Really have to rely on rolling guard for your invulnerability and that is the steel path build we also have some gameplay prepared right here where even though i played public no teammate came in and i was playing alone and even without teammates this build had no problems you know no problems sustaining itself and keeping me alive doing a lot of damage it was great fun playing it with it and um, i i strongly encourage playing Stein X in a team with this build maybe with a bit of team communication as well so the teammates know that they need to kill enemies to keep you alive and you get the aggro so they stay alive and everybody stays alive and Stein X is a great team frame play this build play in a team you're gonna to love it absolutely love it the only important thing is keep killing you know everything something has to die every 1.3 seconds otherwise you're gonna die and uh, you're gonna be dead in an instant because we have no survivability no armor no health nothing to sustain you you have to rely fully on shield gating and i find this build here very very interesting if you like Styanax and you want to know all the other details about what came with the Veilbreaker update, then you absolutely have to smash that subscribe button because believe me, there is going to be content coming for all the other mechanics that were introduced with Veilbreaker in the upcoming days and weeks. We're going to look into all of that and I'd really appreciate if you sub to the channel because over 90% of all my viewers are still not subscribed and uh, let's go and change that, alright? Alright, thank you for your support. And with that being said, this was your Blackie, over and out, and see you in the next one.